Uh, let's see. Okay, 35. Budget presentation. Uh, the budget we're presenting tonight is a uh, Hundred and thirty seven dollars less than it the department requested <coughs> last year. Bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, the manager has further reduced our request by placing the twenty thousand dollars for household hazardous waste. Pardon, under pardon me, sir, and just Warner. because the young, young man sneezed, could you start right over again? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the budget we have presented before you tonight is one hundred and thirty seven dollars less than what the former director presented last year. Uh, the manager further reduced our budget request on one line item, the uh, household hazardous waste, by twenty thousand. Um, we had put the twenty thousand in for household hazardous waste. We used to spend it on the dues for the fifty three B district. Uh, next year, we have to run our own, or should run our own, uh, household hazardous waste. Um, we are in agreement with the manager's recommendation to make it a separate uh, warrant article to let the, the people decide. The, basically, the, uh, my marching instructions when we started to put together this budget was to basically have uh, truth in spending, not so much, you know, we hear all the ads all the time, truth in lending. Well, in this case, it's just truth in spending. Um, but I understand that, you know, that's where we start, where we end up could be somewhere different. Uh, in specific, like, for instance, streetlights, 215000 is what we request. The reason why we put truth in that is we spent 213 last year, 206 the year before. So it's just in keeping in with what the street lights cost us. In the past, we haven't fully funded it, and we've just robbed Peter to pay Paul for street lights. Rock salt, same thing. We've put in 80,000 because we spent 80,245 because we spent 80,539 in 2014 and 84, 191, and 13. So you can see it runs kind of consistent as far as the dollar cost. Um, drug testing, we put in, again, we're at 6,128. Last year we spent 6,116. The year before, 7,714. Uh, 13 was an odd year. We couldn't get through to people that they actually, you know, we're joking today that when you, we send you for a drug and alcohol test, we don't expect you to pass. We actually expect you to show up having not had something to drink. Uh, vehicle maintenance, uh, we're, at, we're requesting 90000 We spent 68492 already just on highway equipment. It's not including solid waste rolling stock. Um, it's just, that's what we spent. Last year was 105. The year before that was 97000 so with that many pieces of equipment that we have, it does cost that about amount of money to keep them maintained. Tires, brakes, front end alignments. Um, so basically that's the budget that I've given you. Now, uh, I had the ability to do the truth in, in spending because I honestly did have the reduction in solid waste, what we pay for tipping, and what we pay for transportation. We got some very, very good bids in. Uh, you'll see some of that savings is shown up in those those solid waste lines, but the only way I was able to bring in or bring forth to you to consider a budget that's less than last year is because I had that room <coughs> to work with. That was it. I don't have any specific lines to go through. I thought I'd leave it to the board. Okay, um, Mr. Waddell. Yeah, you're coming in less, yep. which is always great. Super. Are you comfortable that you're, that, that you're going to be able to cover yes. what you need to cover? Yes. Okay. If I'm not, you know, you've, you've probably seen a different direction in the department this year, and that it's a very much um, can do, get it done. Uh, Exeter Road got paved, Toll Farm Road got paved. Uh, sidewalks outside of this building were in disrepair. You can see I directed the staff. They trained a few guys on how to use a jackhammer in the last couple of weeks. It's getting done. Um, we're going to work with the uh, uh, Hampton 2020 group doing the sidewalk over on Greg's. Jennifer's handling the High and Lafayette Street projects. So you can see it's a very much uh, philosophy of applying it and getting it done. Um, 
I do a little more, except I'm holding back on because we're we're probably going to have maybe a hundred thousand in our budget. If we have two winter storms, it wipes it out. For instance, tree removals in there again at twenty six thousand. Have I done some tree removal this year? Yeah, we have. North Shore Road, there was a big dead tree. It was a safety issue. There was one in the park, safety issue. I've got 17 other trees that I've identified that need to come down. Mm -hmm. But I'm holding off doing it because I'm concerned. But to get back to answer your question, yes, if we had this money, we'd have another successful year. We would get things done. Side, more sidewalks will get done. Trees will get removed. Roads will get patched and repaired. Things will get done. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Bridal. One of the things you're probably going to get a question on is <coughs> the sand budget. And I look back, and if you want to explain that a little bit, if you could. Um, We're not using as much sand as we used to. Every year, let's say you end up with, you bought 2,000 yards, and every year you ended up with 500. Next year you bought 2,000, still got 500 left over. Well, guess what? We got 4,000 yards left over. It's a nice little pile. Um, I'm not, you know, I have a buddy that works down the, the Navy Yard, and they say they don't leave any dollar unspent. You know, at the end of the year, you spend it right to the line, or you're going to lose it. Well, I had a lot of snow removal, so you'll see that there's nothing been spent on sand. In fact, we're going to Wednesday move the sand pile to a different location. Um, we'll better be able to better assess, but we have enough sand to get me through till the end of the year. I, I have salt stockpiled from the end of probably 800 ton that's left over. So I'm not running out to spend down a salt line and a sand line and a, any other line just for the sake of spending. Trying to, we're trying to be good stewards of the public dollar that we're given. We're trying to get things done with it, like the sidewalks, but not just. But it's important to have those lines there because at some point in time, we're going to have to buy right. it. Right. We and did use a fair <laughs> amount of sand last year. We actually had more. We did use a fair amount of sand last year, especially on all the side streets, because the amount of icing through January and February. And I, I agree with you. I think I think the public, from what I'm hearing from the public, is they are seeing that some of the stuff they voted on is actually getting done this year. Mm -hmm. uh, they're happy with that. That uh, everybody I, I I've talked with is is uh, appreciative of everything that Public Works does. Um, you guys have had a tough year this year. Uh, it was, as I said earlier, it was a long, cold winter, a snowy winter, and it's been a long, dry summer. summer. Uh, so you've had a lot of challenges, and I, I think you, uh, your whole department has stepped up. Yeah. Um, and to come in with a budget that is technically less than last year, I think is very commendable. And uh, I, I think we can move forward with it. I think it's not a problem. So, thank you. Yep. Mrs. Wilson. I think that it's premature to say that we're standing basically with the current year's budget because we have special money articles here to add personnel, which we know we need. But, uh, all of that is expenses related to public works. Let me ask you really quickly, and then I asked Fred briefly when I came in because I'm terribly disappointed in not seeing the washdown facility in here. And I guess <coughs> when we get to the Warren articles, you can explain why you had to prioritize what you've done in as a special article. But it just makes me so sad to lose another year when we can't wash those vehicles down. That is a concern. Are we assigning anyone to work with Bob Walker yet to pair up with him to learn his job? I'm terrified that if something... Chuck Siemens has been moved up to Mike Key's position. Yeah. Um, to fill Chuck's position, uh, Ryan Kelly moved the right. highway over to there. Right. Um, so Toby this week finally has his full complement, if you right. want. Um, Chuck does have some experience doing that kind of work in the past, especially when around this time of year, Bobby always went to the Freiburg Fair and Mike went off apple picking. So 
So it isn't like they don't have any experience, but I, I do hear what you're saying. They need to be given more experience, mm -hmm. more exposure to it. Um, now that Brian Kelly's there, like for instance, Freiburg Fair's first week of, you know, I think it starts the 4th or the 9th of October. Uh, I'm sure Chuck will be given some of that work and Brian will be able to and do it as an understudy. Yeah. Yeah. But Brian can, can lead the other crew. Okay. Cause I'm really concerned about yeah. that facet of the operation. Um, salt shed. Is there a better way? I know this was discussed with Mr. Noyes a couple of years back because that salt shed, in addition to sitting under power lines is pretty exposed. And I don't know if you have any idea how much salt we lose or not because it's so exposed. <coughs> Is there any way to, to shield it a little better from the, is it the east side? I think it's the east side. Well, I don't we, know if that's we, a we big concern. We have looked at that operation. Mm -hmm. Sand is now going to get moved from the end of the garage to the, if you were at the transfer station, the back side yeah. of the salt barn. Gotcha. The area that they mix sand and salt in is actually going to be closest to your transfer station. Uh -huh. You know where there's a little, there's a ramp there where, we're, yep. where we load? The decision was made not to rebuild that ramp. So we're re, instead of, we used to run back and forth between the sand pile and the salt pile. Yeah. They're now, under my insistence, they're Good. in one area. Good. So it's going to cut down on the running. Right. We still need the end facing the marsh to unload the trucks, but yes, something like a heavy canvas tarp or something like that right. could be dropped down to Some kind cut of down on the wind. Yeah. The other end is where we would unload and, and the knit. moisture coming in. Yeah, I know that, but I just that concerns me because salt is money too. Right. Um, have you, um, Fred? Done, given any thought to that snow insurance, I know you have a Warren article in there for another means of funding, but it, is that something we can perhaps explore with the Public Works Director just to get kind of prices? We're going to take a look at it. <coughs> it's um, difficult. We've already talked to one company and they said they wouldn't even discuss it with us. Uh -huh. um, we had a bad winter last year. Oh, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, everybody knows it, which doesn't help us at all. Well, so. it wasn't just us. <coughs> well, no, but yeah. the seacoast was a was a badly hit area, yeah. and uh, that's we found that that's having an effect. Yeah. I just so hate we'll continue to, to look. I hate to see us have to set up more funds. We have funds coming out of our ears, but if he needs help this winter, like he did past winter, um, I know that you. You know, you are thinking uh, insurance about claims, of course, take sometimes six or seven months, uh, even at the best, before you get money. Yeah. Uh, so it's it may not even even if we had the fund uh, or the or the policy, I should say, and we had something bad happen between now and January first, it might not be until June of next year that we actually get the time. money, yeah. which would be too late for to affect this year's budget. It's a catch-22. It always is. <laughs> the other thing that concerns me, first of all, Jen did a great, great job. Thank you so much for giving us a rundown on the, on the construction projects. That's a big help. I really enjoyed reading through that. And if you have questions from residents, I think it helps. It certainly helps me to be able to refer to that. Um, Chris, the other thing that really concerns me is the shoulders of the roads. Mm -hmm. because the shoulders are, you know, we crews used to go out and do that and beef up the shoulders, but it's really degrading a lot of the pavement. And the four corners, Mace Road, Anne's Lane area is awful. Mm -hmm. And the southern part of Landing Road is in big trouble. Uh, not the main Landing Road, but across <coughs> the street where Peter Tilton is. Yep. I, it's the bus turns around down there. That's that's a big problem with the pavement. You've done a good job. I can just see more things popping up, and and I'm not happy about having things segregated in warrant articles. I'd rather have them in your budget, but we'll tackle that beast when we get to it. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Director, Assistant Director, and uh, Teresa. Thanks so much. Appreciate it very much. Thank, Thank you. you. 
And I appreciate that you're working hard to uh, to be a good steward of the <coughs> town's assets and uh, money that's been put aside. And being able to return some of it to the taxpayers goes a long way to make everyone feel better. And your job must be easy with these two girls there to help you. <laughs> ladies, ladies. They uh, keep me in line. Oh, good. <laughs> Teresa's done a lot. How long have you been there now, Teresa? Since I first started working with the town. It's almost That's like asking right her age. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably not a good when idea. I started working. Um, I came 74. Well, congratulations that you've been Stuck a good job. And well, you do such a great job. It makes a lot of people feel great. So thank you. Mrs. I, I have a quick question for Fred while while Mr. Jacobs is here. The Sun Valley Beach Cleaning, do you want to, I know it's later on in the agenda, but do you want to discuss that while Chris is here? Or Sure. Fred? Yeah, because it's only fair that he'd be here. Yeah, I think I'd be more comfortable if I hear from him on that. He, he did ask to have it put on the agenda, and we, we certainly have done that. So. As long as we have him in our clutches. I'm not sure about the clutches. Woo! <laughs> He had requested that the Board of Selectmen approve a, uh, a single source vendor contract for cleaning the South uh, the Sun Valley Beach in 2016 uh, and to give policy waivers on the purchasing policy on sections 718-3, 718-4A, and 718-16. Would you like to add to that? Yeah, we currently have a contract with KD Landscaping. Um, he went out two years ago and purchased a beach rake. The beach rake cost him 53000 So it's a um, reason why a, I list him as a sole source provider is not everybody's walking around with a $53,000 beach rake in their backyard. Um, the other reason um, I'm recommending him again is there was probably six times during the summer, he would just call me randomly to say, hey, want to let you know I'm done beach raking for the week if you want to go see it. Um, is there anything else I need to do, anything to be aware of? Um, he was Mr. Dependable. Uh, didn't have any equipment breaks down. I had zero complaints from people over at Sundown. Um, so it w when taking over a directorship, it was a relief to have somebody like him handling that aspect of the work. And I'd be pleased to have him back again this year. Questions, Mr. Waddell? No, sir. Mr. Bridal? My only question is, yes, we have some valley. Do we do anything north of Place Cove on the beach there? Do we ever have any, do we pick that area or do we, does it, is it able to be raked? A seal once. Um, we have had, you know, to go down there once or twice for s some hand work, but nothing. Uh, There's no real soft hand, hand there because the, the tide yeah. comes in. Right. So it would just be um, hand, hand picking right. and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Like, other than that. Um, real only other real issue we handle is that uh, Japanese seaweed uh, right next to Bicentennial Park. Mm -hmm. it seems to be that natural hook in the ledge is traps it all in there so it doesn't end up further down the beach. And we take it, when it gets <laughs> odorous, we take it out of that location several hundred tons at a time. Well, I, I've been over to uh, the Sun Valley part of the beach a number of times this year, and, and this gentleman is doing a real good job over sure. there. And i got no problem with it, so thank you. Mrs. Wilson? Where do they put the beach rakings, Chris? I mean, like, what happens with the seaweed and whatever? Where do you, where do you put it? He ends up bringing that over and it passes right through his waist because he doesn't end up with much sand. His, right. his rake looks more like a corn harvester than a, than but a rake, so. the raking is anything like what we were getting before from the state? Are you finding a lot of stuff, discards, umbrellas, uh, whatever? What? Not the big stuff. I, I, maybe he's calling that out ahead of time, but it's the, uh, you know, the bottles, bags, diapers. Uh, sandwich baggies, things like that, left left out on the beach. The bigger things like a bodyboard or an umbrella or a lawn chair. Uh, a lot of times, I think he's just 
I don't know for a fact. I can ask him, but I think he's just literally hand picking that out. Okay. Rather than letting it go through the machine. Okay. Now, I have no doubt that this is a nice gentleman doing a good job, but I also have a problem with the amount um, $15,200 in this context. A couple years ago, two years, three years, Fred, two years maybe, when the state stopped doing this, the suggestion was that we approach Seabrook because, of course, Sun Valley is a very small area and Seabrook does <coughs> send its uh, maintenance individuals up to rake their own beach. Um, and I believe there was an overture made to Seabrook to see if they would be interested in helping us out by breaking that little piece of Sun Valley. I guess at that time it went nowhere. But now I'm given to understand that we are providing uh, services of Marine One for water rescues for Seabrook. Is that true? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I, I've been I don't know of any calls that have been over there. I okay, been I've been about. told that we are providing, um, I, I would like to find out about that, uh, services. They have their own boat. Well, I did. did may like may I just say, make I a just point of order? Sure. Are we talking about breaking? So or, I was wondering boats? if we could do a little cooperative, if that's the case, because that's different <coughs> than road rescues and just sending the ambulance down the highway. So I'd like to investigate that a little more. This isn't going to come up. Um, let's see, is this in the budget or is it in a special article? I thought I read it in a special article. I don't remember because it's got a huge pile. But um, I'm just a little worried about that. Dollar amount. It's, it's in the budget. Um, <clears throat> the problem here is that we bid this several times, and uh, we we only got one bidder every right. time we bid it, and it was this particular I, person I because nobody owns a rate. I can see that. Yeah. I did go and meet with the town manager, and I did talk to two of the selectmen in Seabrook, and they have absolutely positively no interest in doing anything on the Hampton end of the beach. I think we were talking about 5000 or something like that. Well, so. we, we told them to name their own, <laughs> name their own price. And yeah. their, their price was zero. We won't do it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that has something more to do with the fact that they have three miles of beach. Oh, yeah. And uh, and, and doing that, uh, they would have to uh, incur additional expenses for overtime and so forth. And, uh, well, it's just a matter of their union contracts require certain things and our union contracts <coughs> require certain things. So it became impossible to reach an agreement with the, between the two towns in this area. It was kind of like um, when we had the agreement to help move sand from the, the uh, dredging of the, uh, the harbor uh, onto, uh, onto the beaches and, and there was a, a falling out. and. Uh, since that day, nothing has happened between the two towns. So. Okay. Well, it's just a thought, but I'm just a little nervous about that price. Mr. Uh, there's incredible uh, real estate value uh, down in that neck of the woods. I'm down there consistently. Uh, those people don't uh, ask much for town services. Uh, they would require a clean beach, and it's a beautiful area. I run down there all the time. This outfit, I've spoken with the owner. I have observed their operations. Uh, it's important that we keep that clean. Uh, we have liabilities down there. Uh, as uh, the director has said, he maintains uh, close communications, and it is an extra set of eyes for us down there. Uh, from a very uh, reliable and important subcontractor, uh, it will be very difficult to find someone else to perform that service at that location exclusively. Uh, and I, I fully support it, and uh, I think the director has worked hard at it. And again, uh, it's brand new gear, it's reliable, and that beach always looks beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So now, who does own that rake? He does. He Katie does. Lansky. Yeah. So that's a good thing. We did ask if he'd be willing to sell it to us so we could do it ourselves. Uh, He's may and. He was looking at other con possible contracts. If he only uses it one day a week for us, he might move it to another beach to use for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't interested in selling it. And then when I asked how much he'd paid for it, what was the new one to cost, he sent me the, forwarded me the company's latest sheet, and 53000 was the municipal price. Well, that's what the, the extra money's for then. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll make, uh, we need to I'll, vote on that? I'll make a motion yes. that we uh, 
We accept the single source vendor for the Sun Valley Beach Cleaning in 2016 with a purchase price of 15-2. So this 15-2 is a... Yeah, I think we need that in there. 15-2, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. 15-2. I'll second it. All those in favor? Four. And I, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna abstain right now because I haven't got my abstention. head around it. Thank may you very I ask, much. Whoop, may I ask the public works director one more question? Yeah. Uh, solid waste. Trash. You're inundated now with more development, more building. How close are you to going underwater or how comfortable are you handling what you've got? You've got to rehab the transfer station uh, with another, what have you got in the money article? How, and you're using, I imagine, a lot of time on pickup. Where are we with trash as far as percentage of effort in the department's time? Well, when we, when we operate, if you will, on the bubble or the curve, it's that 13 weeks. It's not so much the new residences, let's say the a Dalton Lane or a Litchfield or uh, mm -hmm. a new Hilliard that's going to be the issue. Um, it's the uh, volume that comes off the beach. Yeah. Um, critical weekends were, of course, the holiday weekends, um, mainly because the transfers, well, if waste management's closed for the day and the beach isn't, that's where the problem arises. So, for instance, like that Sunday, Monday holiday, where we may be, the only way to expand the bubble is to extend, expand our uh, transfer capability, meaning basically those 100 cubic yard trailers. Uh, we've noticed this year, now that they've in, been in service for three years, uh, trailer one and trailer five have had issues with the pusher. Uh, we've had extensive hydraulic issues with those. Um, so, and the other thing we experienced in the spring was a fire in trailer one. Someone threw away uh, hot ashes and uh, like a pellet, wood stove pellet stuff and it got into the, got mixed in with some furniture and smoke started pouring out of the trailer. Wonderful. Um, so, if we had lost that trailer and it had to have, you know, it replaced, in the middle of that 13 <coughs> period, we'd have been stuck. Mm. We'd have been very, it would have been very expensive to rent another trailer. So the capacity of the transfer station, if you will, what we call the throughput capacity, is sufficient. As long as all three compactors are running. Yeah. It's the trailers that are gonna, as the town grows and the volume of that refuse grows, um, particularly in that 13 weeks, then we will need more hauling more trailers to haul. Now one of the articles in our pile, our 51 article pile, relates to an additional three employees for Public Works, which right. I know you need. Help me out, the three additional employees, where would they be assigned? Is that part of the waste? We'd actually have the waste? A, a road crew. Yeah. Right now there were many weeks during that 13 week period if two people took a vacation out of solid waste, even because we put all pieces of equipment, all the collection, the green collection trucks on the road. Yeah. We robbed highway to the point where right. Al Jones was the worker and the foreman. Wow. Or it was Al Jones and Russ Nickerson after Russ got done sweeping wow. for three hours. Yeah. So um, having three additional workers would then allow us to put together you look at this time of year, this eight weeks after we stop trash collection, the, the focus right now is mill and patch, everything that you can get milled and patched before it gets too cold. Right. So um, that's why when you asked me about what, a week ago, when is leaf pickup going to happen, yeah. we try and push that out just as far as we can yeah. so that we get the most of the milling and the patching done because we've, we've got a list of 20 to 30 places. None of them small, some of them as big as what we're sitting in collectively for paving that you literally have to mill out. So having no, 
if we get those three people, we will have a crew that during the summer can now respond to potholes and some do some milling and some patching and some resurfacing when it's best to get it done. It sounds like you're really got a good, you know, that you have a good handle on it. And the public is very, very happy with the way the trash is. The bleach has never looked better. You do a wonderful job. And we're so glad that you can keep up with all the other things that you have to. And with uh, more money coming in in the future, you know, hopefully the public will look at your request and look at it the way it should be looked at. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none. When are we doing rolling stock? Are we doing that in conjunction with Chris's warrant article, Fred? That's up to the board. <clears throat> it might make more sense to do it in conjunction with the warrant article. Well, it would probably make more sense to do that because that's where you're talking about equipment. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for coming in tonight, ladies. We appreciate it.